Hey everybody, Coach Toolshed here, and today we're going to be discussing the Fallout 76 beta, which took place last night, and we don't really know when the next session is going to take place at this point. They haven't said anything because somehow, inexplicably, they're not running the beta every day. But we're going to take a look at the gameplay that I have from last night, some of the stuff I captured, and I'll give you my overall experience in the game last night. Now, I'm not going to go too far into an overall discussion about the game itself. I'm just going to show you some of the things that I had and some of the stuff that I experienced in the game last night. So, first and foremost, how is the game running? Well, it is running better than the of the version of the game that we saw a couple weeks ago from the Greenbrier event, but it still definitely has some work to do. There's a lot of slowdown when you run into, uh, if there's a lot of AI, if you're running into an area where there's a lot of assets on the screen, and it was, of course, if there's other players on the screen, you're going to experience that sort of slowdown as well. And the further you get away from the vault, I did notice that it was a lot more problematic. And I also noticed stuff like flickering assets trees off in the distance flickering walls coming in and out of existence as i moved down a hallway and i would go back and forth to test it and i kept seeing the same thing over and over again as i got further away from the vault some of the interior spaces just aren't fully optimized yet so they do still have a few more weeks to get to do that but it's still three weeks away from the official launch of the game so they definitely have their work cut out for them and the frame rate i mean Truth be told, that could always be a problem with this game. We don't really know. But it is cleaned up somewhat. They definitely have a lot of work to do. And at one point, I was kicked off the server entirely. The server froze on me a couple of times. But one at one point, I got kicked off entirely. And when I logged back in, proximity chat was down for the rest of the night. So that's some other things that they need to worry about. And I did experience a lot of audio bugs both with enemies dying, uh, some of the sounds with the guns going off, some lag with that, and the radio stations just sort of fading in and out, not not in a way where it's typical in Fallout where you move out of range, but it would just stop playing and then just cut back in suddenly. It was, it was a little bit odd, so a lot of audio issues. But other than that, it did run okay for a Bethesda game. Um, I was able to sign in easily, there wasn't a long queue time. I was able to get into sessions, and when I was loading areas, if I you know had to go out back out into the outside world, it would load relatively quickly. So not too bad as far as that goes overall. So on the technical side of things, not terrible, but definitely still a lot of work that has to be done. And as I said, as you move farther away from the vault, it gets worse. So that's something to look at. So let me just right off the bat discuss the thing that I did like the most about the game. Let's just be fair. I know that I've been negative about the game, but let me tell you something I liked about the game right away. And that is what you're seeing on the screen, which is sort of this really interesting sort of location that you're not really used to seeing in a Fallout game. This was something that really caught my eye. I saw it up on the map. And I was like, what is that exactly? Let me go try to find my way there. And now there was some mountain, some Skyrim style mountain jumping required to get to this location. But once I got here, I was rewarded. It, this, this is actually a pretty interesting location. Now, I didn't really take the time to go through any of the locations very thoroughly. I was more interested in seeing what I could see, seeing what sort of enemy variety I noticed out in the wild. And we will get to that in a minute. But this is just a really interesting location that I found. And if the, if the map is full of spots like this, this would at least make it worth exploring for a certain amount of time. You know, will the rest of the game hook you in? We don't really know. But if there's more locations like this, this is actually fairly unique and pretty interesting. And as you can see... You, can, you have a lot better vistas out in this game than you might see in other Fallout games. And the draw distance is improved. I will admit, the draw distance is definitely improved. Now, ah, see here. Look, look at this right here on the screen. This is one of the things I'm talking about. Look at this lighting problem with the shadow. See the walls? See that just coming in and out like that? That's the sort of thing that I'm talking about right there. I'm glad. I'm actually glad I captured that. That's the exact sort of thing that I'm talking about. Weird issues like that happen all throughout the game. So, just something to keep in mind. So, let's get into some of the enemy variety that I just mentioned. And this is something that could be an issue as we move forward is 
is there enough enemy variety throughout the world? Now, occasionally I would stumble across a high-level enemy that was really... I, I came across a couple things that were in the high 20s, and of course I saw a level 50 enemy flying around in the sky, but I didn't engage with that one. But some of the other ones, the level 26 enemies, did come after me, and I was forced to sort of run away because I wasn't really doing too much damage to them. Now, I could have sat there and pumped all of my bullets into them and hopefully survived, but I decided to be better to run away. But overall this is might be an overriding problem with the game and now this is something that they can fix and work on they can add to this but you fight a lot of these enemies called the scorch which are basically just ghouls that carry weapons and sometimes will say things uh they don't carry on there's certainly no dialogue if this is the npcs that people were hitching their wagon to that's certainly not the situation that we're looking at at all they they just instantly will attack you if you hear gunfire and you start getting pelted with bullets, odds are it's one of these guys shooting at you. And these and just standard issue super mutants are what comprise most of the enemies. You'll also get the Mr. Handy robots, the Protectron robots, but aside from that and some bugs, that is most of what I encountered in the few hours that we've played. Now, there you see a super mutant on screen. So... That might be an issue as we move forward, is if we're just shooting the same basic enemies over and over again, and like I said, I stretched to the outer side of the map, so I pretty much cut diagonally right from the starting location. I just went northeast and just beelined for the edge of the map, so I saw a pretty good cross-section of the map. Now, like I said, it didn't explore everything thoroughly, but I tried to find as many spots as possible. Now, something else that I didn't find was the different locations where people thought that there might be civilized ghouls or civilized super mutants or civilized robots. I didn't find anything like that. Now that's not to say that there's not in the game, but I certainly didn't come across anything like that. Everything I saw out in the wild was hostile to me. I didn't find any sort of friendly settlement of any kind. So the whole notion of, well, they just said no human NPCs. Well, that's not really the case. And also the, the stuff with the factions going on, from what I found in the game, the factions are just, you, you, they're just going to be telling basic storylines through audio logs, through computer terminals, through notes, that just sort of track these different groups. There's not really factions per se in the game that I found to this point. Now, I might be wrong, only had a couple hours with the game, but based on what I found in the game, that's pretty much what these factions are that we've been hearing about. Okay, now I just talked about the audio logs and the notes and stuff, and this is a fundamental design decision that I feel might hamper the game moving forward, which is that pretty much all the quests are just going to be found from a chain of notes that you find. You're going to have to read these notes on the ground. You're going to have to go into computer terminals to get this sort of questing, and I'm not just I'm just not really sure that that's the most enticing thing. And if you're in a party, say you're in a party of four and everyone's talking and you have to listen to an audio log to try to figure out what you're doing in the mission, that's really just not a great way of delivering the mission. And that's pretty much all I encountered. Now, the other way you pick up missions is you just walk into an area and a quest will just pop up on your screen. There's events that happen, but sometimes just you'll walk into an area and it will tell you exactly what to do, what the quest is in that area. Sort of takes some of the drama and surprise out of, wait, I just got to this spot, I don't even know what it is yet, let me explore first, but you're already telling me exactly what I have to do to clear the area out. It's like, okay, you could have given me two seconds maybe to poke my head around before you told me exactly what enemy type is down there before I even have a chance to scout it out. So that's something that I think, I, I don't know, I think that that's a fundamental design issue that I don't know if they're ever going to be able to overcome. I don't know if that's going to really be engaging going forward, but I didn't really want to keep to make this into a meta discussion about the game. I'm just letting you know what I saw is the quest, it's basically just Radiant Quest. Just go here, here's an icon on your map, go to the icon, grab the thing, quest over. That's really all it was. Now there was some mild exploration involved with some of the things. It, it would mark a location on your map and you would it wouldn't be pinpointed when you got there. It would sort of gray out and you would have to search the area for the exact location. But other than that, 
not too much. It's basically go there, kill these things, pick up whatever loot and bullets you can, and head on your way. Now, speaking of loot, let's get into this. So, the loot drops themselves are leveled, and that basically you'll get gear that drops at level 1, you'll get gear that drops at level 5, level 10, and I'm assuming it will continue to go from there. I didn't really get past level 10 gear drops. But, pretty much, you're not going to unlock anything special in the first couple hours. Now, I did receive a nuke code just in the first couple hours of the game, just off some random enemy that was by himself, just chilling. He wasn't even a high-level enemy, just by himself, one of these scorched enemies, and I killed him, and he had a nuke code on him. So, the nuke codes apparently are not really difficult to find if I was able to gather one just by myself randomly on the side of the road. That's not really an incredibly difficult task. So, uh, I, I imagine... I imagine once we get the actual game, if you get into a party, people will have these nuke codes. I don't think it's going to be too big of an issue finding the nuke codes. But as far as regular loot goes, you're going to find the same basic stuff that you found in Fallout 4. Your short hunting rifles, your pipe pistols, your bolt action rifles, that sort of thing. It's not going to be it, basically everything that I've had dropped so far would be stuff that you would find from Fallout 4. And... That includes pretty much the gameplay. I mean, the gameplay itself pretty much is Fallout 4. As we already know, they built this game on the bones of Fallout 4. So, it, pretty much everything that's going to happen in the game is going to be... Now, obviously, the drops can improve as we get deeper into the game, and they can always add stuff as we go. But, based on everything I've seen so far, it's the same basic loot drops that, you're gonna, that you would have seen in Fallout 4. So, let's move on. You just saw me pick up... You just saw me do a level up and a I got a card pack, didn't I? So let's discuss the perk system right now. Because I honestly I don't see what the appeal is right now. I do not understand why people seem to like it. I think people are just kind of tolerating it and saying that they like it. I don't see what is supposed to be so great about it. My issue with it is I'm sinking points into my special stats. And I don't know where those points are going to lead. I don't know what my character is going to look like at level 20 or level 30 or level 50. I don't know what sort of perk cards I'll have available to me. And the more points I sink into each special stat, the more that I'll have, the more perk cards that I'll have available in that particular special skill. But if I don't know what I'm aiming for, if I don't know where I'm shooting towards the end of the game. Well, that's a problem. And this is an issue because they've said that there's, you know, hundreds, thousands of cards, I think they said. There's going to be thousands of different random perk cards. And they said they're going to be adding them all the time. So that's going to be an issue when I'm sinking points into my special because those are limited. Once you get to the soft cap, you're not going to be able to allocate more points into your special stats. So the points you go with, that's going to build your entire character. Now you do have an option to create another character if you want and spec it into some different points, but I think they need to make sure that they put some sort of respec system into this game. If they don't, that could be a major issue because I, if I don't know what I'm aiming for as I'm sinking points into my special skills, that is a problem for people trying to plan builds. Now, I know the perk cards that you get dropped are going to be random anyway. You don't know exactly what you're going to get, but it would be nice if we had some sort of visual way or just some sort of general idea of where we were headed as we're sinking points into these stats. That is something that I really am not a huge fan of. And the card system in general, I mean, I'm all for being able to swap cards in and out as the situation requires. It, it feels a little bit clunky the way it's implemented. It's not terrible, but just in general, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the system. So let's discuss the multiplayer aspect of things. What does it add? What does it subtract? Well, as you can see from my footage, I did not team up with anyone. I decided to go solo and I just went up north. Now, there were some people I could have joined initially out of the vault. People sent me some requests to join their party. I decided, now. I just want to go see what I can see. I don't want to be held back. There will be other times when I can join other people and we can take it from there as it goes. But the 
drama that they said that they wanted, which I've alluded to not really going to be in the game anymore after all the anti-griefing measures that they put in the game, well, there is no drama when you see another player. It's basically just a nuisance on the screen, unless you want to go up to them and engage with them in the proximity chat, which, like I said, the proximity chat for me went down pretty early on in the experience, so that's something that they'll have to fix. But even when it was up and enabled, I mean, yeah, you could talk to people, and I, I talked to some people. We were going through the, some of the menus, some of the settings as, as we were exiting the vault, and I was talking to them for a little bit, but pretty soon you drift away. And yes, the map actually is big enough where you're not really going to see people. Hey, Pete, you were right about that. See, guys, I can be fair. Pete was right. I didn't really see anyone once I started emerging from the vault and going around. Now, every once in a while, I would look on my map and be like, oh, that guy, there's someone over there where I was a few minutes ago, maybe 30 minutes ago, but no one was really around for the rest of the time. I, everything I saw was just AI enemies, and that's pretty much it. Nothing was friendly. Every once in a while, you'd come across a robot that wouldn't try to attack you, but they weren't really NPCs. They were more like a talking toaster. There was nothing really going on. Nothing of any value whatsoever as far as that goes. But I, I don't know. I, I didn't have a terrible time playing solo. It just it feels kind of aimless. You're, there's a, As you can see, there's just the side of your screen is just going to fill up with random objectives. Well, now I'm going back to earlier footage, but as you've seen throughout the entire video, the side of your screen just fills up with random quests to do. Some of them you pick up when you're not even attempting to, and they just keep piling up. And the, you can go into the menu and disable all them to remove all those icons, but at the end of the day, that's just going to keep filling the more you go through the game. And I, overall, i got to say, none of the quests I did felt like a quest at all. Not at all. That... That is a big problem with the game, I think, is that the questing is just basically, hey, go there, kill this, pick this up. And is that too much different than Fallout 4? In many ways, no, but it feels without a actual person of any kind giving you the quest, it does sort of take away some of that incentive, and it really just, it does make things feel a little bit more hollow. But that's another thing where this goes into the overall design decisions of the game that they decided to go with that sort of presentation. And so there's really no nothing we can do about that. That is just how the game is going to be, for better or worse. In my opinion, I don't really care for it, but that's what they decided to go with. And something else that ties into that, just an overall design decision... There's been a lot of talk about the no NPC issue, no human NPCs, where you're not going to come up across settlements, you're not going to know what's going on. And one thing that I did notice pretty strongly, when I was going up to any given location, I didn't really have a sense of drama at all, because I knew whatever I was going to find in there was going to be hostile. So I just went in ready to start blasting. I wasn't ready to go in and have a conversation. I didn't know if there was going to be a sort of situation I could defuse. Maybe there's something going on as I went in there. As even in Fallout 4, you would find stuff like that. And and that sort of would add a little bit. Like you, you wouldn't necessarily just want to go in and just start shooting everything you saw as soon as you walked into an area. But that's something that isn't the case in Fallout 76. Pretty much you know anything you see that's moving is probably going to attack you. And if not, you're not even going to really be able to target it. So that is not... That to me sort of kills some of the enjoyment of the game is you know when you go up to any location it's either going to be abandoned and you can just loot it because I did find a lot of just flat out abandoned locations with nothing going on inside. I just grabbed some loot and left. And then the areas where there were enemies is basically like, okay, well, you know it's just going to be enemies. So it really takes a lot of the drama out of the game. And so this is what I've been saying about this game is, at the end of the day, I just think it's, it's just a looter shooter. You're going around, you're grabbing stuff, you're finding the best gear, and that's really the whole loop of the game. Now, as far as role-playing goes, every player I saw... They took what they take one look at you, and they some of them would try to chat or do an emote, 
and you pretty much you shoot the enemies in the area and then they keep going the way they were going and you keep going the way you were going there's really not much going on as far as player interaction and like i said once i got about an hour into the game i didn't even really see anybody so as far as griefing goes no it i mean i didn't experience it in this session there was a guy at one point who was chasing me around in his underwear with a hatchet just sort of hitting at me and he was trying to lure me into pvp and actually i didn't have my uh the pacifist flag toggle on i didn't even actually check to see where that was in the menu options but he was just sort of trolling me around the map for a little bit it was kind of annoying and i saw you know i saw a couple people die you can go and revive them if you see anyone fall on the ground you can use one of your stim packs to revive them didn't care for that either because I kind of need those stim packs, but I get it. And but other than that, I mean, I didn't really have too much player interaction. Now you could go in in a party and experience it like that. I'm sure that's a different situation. I'll probably try to get into a full party the next time I play the game. But at this point, I don't know. It does solo play is fine because you can hear the vo the audio logs you can take the time to read the notes if you want to do some crafting you want to you know make some more ammo at a crafting station you're not going to hold anyone else up no one else is going to hold you up although if you find a crafting station and someone else is already using it you can't use it it's kind of annoying like that so you have to like wait your turn when you do find a crafting station and sometimes you really need one if you have a broken weapon or something like that and you have to repair it if you come across a station and somebody's already there, well, you're going to have to sit and wait. Or you can, I don't know, engage in PvP, but what's the point? I don't know. There's really just no point. But moving on, let's just talk about VATS real quick and the implementation that they've used here. Now, a lot of people aren't really a huge fan of it, and I will say that on a technical level, I didn't think it really was working quite right. It didn't seem like it tracked the enemies very well all the time. And certainly there was times where I'm like standing right in front of an enemy and it wouldn't seem to track them properly. And so it was a little, I think they got some technical work to do. Now, when it does work, is it okay? Yeah, it's all right. It's sort of like a quick scope system almost. You just tap the VATS button and then if you got a good percent shot, you just pull the trigger. And it does work all right when it does connect. But like I said, it seems like it has trouble reading the AI properly at times. That's something that they can probably get worked out over time. But overall, I don't think it's a terrible system. I do prefer the time slow down. Now, they say it's impossible, but we all know that it's not technically impossible because there are games that have done that in an online setting but they said that they can't do it so whatever that's how it is but i do prefer the older way obviously they chose to go with this method it's not horrendous but it's not really all that great so overall what do i think about the game to this point well as i've said before it's too early to judge it you can't just all out judge it just based on a couple hours because you're not really going to know what the game is until you get to the end game grind and that's when these type games really present themselves so still a lot of time and like I said we don't know when the next chance is where we'll actually get the beta and I might be knee deep into Red Dead Redemption 2 by the time we get the next beta so we'll have to see what happens but at this point there's a couple things to like the exploration is alright some of the features are they're okay they're serviceable, but there's still a lot of issues with this game and definitely a lot of technical problems that need to be sorted out. But that is all stuff that we can look at a bit more in depth as we see more of the game and as people progress deeper into the leveling system and we can see what sort of stuff they have for us in the end game. Anyway, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. I'm Coach Toolshed. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to stay in tune as we head forward. And as always... Keep it turned to 11.